good afternoon to everyone. It's a beautiful day out there, and hopefully this will be a helpful sermon for all of you today. It's been helpful to me so far, and hopefully it will continue to be that way. I want to talk about the Olivet Prophecy. Now, you all are familiar with the Olivet Prophecy. The disciples came to Jesus and said, What shall be the sign of the end of the times? Okay, I want to take a look at it today, but maybe in a way that we haven't, or you haven't, I haven't looked at it in times past. And I want to focus on Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36, but 36 more so in the month where it says, Watch you and pray always that you be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. And I would like to look at it, First of all, from what it says right there, certainly it's a a directive that Jesus gives to his disciples. And it's something that we have focused on, especially in terms of prophecy. It's a lot of things that people uh, speak about. It's things that when things kind of get sideways with us, that people reflect on and they wonder, well, you know, we get difficult times and all that. Is this the end of time? Uh, is this Armageddon? You know, where where are we in all of these things? And and people's lives begin to change as a result of it. People begin to some people begin even go to church in, in an attempt to just in case to save themselves from the problems and difficulties that they might encounter. Preachers take it to make sure people do get to church and that they. Uh, that they recognize that they're in the right church as well. Because that's always important in, in, in religion today. That's a, that's a big issue about, are you sure you're in the right place at the right time and all of that? And that we've got the best knowledge that there is available. And if you don't come to our church, then you're missing something. That is used as well. And then there are the prophetic preachers who use it kind of like the news. And every day... The church in religion is about the news, what's going on in the news, what is happening in Jerusalem, what is happening in other parts of the world, that this is happening and that is happening. And, and all of their sermons are about news. In fact, historically, I can remember uh, that every week I would get from our headquarters a, um, a news update. It would be eight to ten pages thick. And I had a whole file of news. Things going on. Think about the beast, the false prophet, revelation about Jerusalem, about, well, they're digging uh, limestone in Indiana, and that could be used for the temple and the building of the third temple and all these things. Most of that news, is, by the way, is out of date now. It is. It hasn't happened. And uh, now I'm not belittling news, but I w- want us to take a look at the reality today of the news and what Jesus said. Now, Jesus gave this to those individuals over 2,000 years ago. And Jerusalem did fall, as Jesus tells us in in Luke 21. And, of course, obviously the center point of what Jesus was talking about, at least the focus of the people, was on on the temple there. Because that's where this particular chapter begins. And we're going to take a look at it. But today what we want to look at is watch and pray in the light of the gospel. This is where I believe that we all can learn from this and we can have maybe a little different perspective, a much more positive perspective than possibly that we've had in times past in this regard. Because people are always talking about watch you and pray. And so, again, they get up and they check the morning news. uh, Watch and see if not this New Year's, people will be wondering and somebody going out somewhere to see to meet Christ. You know, somewhere because Jesus could come. And there's those kind of prophecies. Well, let's, let's take a look here. Because I think that there's, there's things that we can learn and that I want us to focus on today. It's kind of like I recognize when it comes to news, like we had debates and presidential debates. And then immediately following are, are people who analyze all this and tell you what you ought to have gotten out of that. What you should have understood and anybody with any intelligence should have gotten out of all of those things. Because they are supposedly the people in the know. 
and, and how things will work. Well, I, I generally find that most of us know very little and it doesn't turn out exactly the way in which people promise or they, they want to predict even in polls or whatever. And I think it's here in terms of Christ as well and what he has to say. So the question here is whether there's any good news or any gospel in the bad news that we see today. Because I hear Jeanette in her prayer I, in her comments, and I, we talk about well, boy, the, the world situation in which we're in. Uh, we've got the possibility of financial problems and globalization and how is this going to happen and that's going to happen. Last week I talked about, you know, what are our concerns and the like. And I want to approach this, as I mentioned, though, in the light of the gospel. Now, what is the gospel and what did Jesus preach? I think it's important that we look at what did Jesus preach, and we'll, we'll take a look at that because we can go back to Luke chapter 4, and beginning in verse 16 through 18 and, and a few verses beyond, Jesus tells us this in verse 16. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as he was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, saying, unrolling it, and he found a place where it is written. And then he reads from the book of Isaiah, this prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel or good news to the poor. This is what Jesus was anointed to do, is to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, began saying today, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And then again, the point about it, they were amazed at his gracious words. So there was something good about the way Jesus presented this prophecy out of the book of Isaiah and what he was telling them. Now we know that Matthew also tells us, that Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, he says, Jesus tells us that he has come to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 11 tells us also, in verse 1, that he is preaching the gospel to the poor. And then Matthew chapter 24, when we're looking at the Olivet Prophecy in Matthew 24, the companion to Luke 21, Jesus said, this gospel shall be preached, and then shall the end come. This good news shall be preached. So when we go back and we look at Luke chapter 21, we're going to see some things that possibly we have not seen before or have not paid attention to in the light of the gospel. Our international audience can support our multimedia efforts by subscribing to PayPal, the safe and secure online payment option from eBay in the United States. Donations in the euro currency or other approved currency options are easily processed and received instantly. Show your support for Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, California, USA. The Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, regarded as the most prosperous region in the United States. We believe Jesus Christ when he proclaimed in Matthew 6.24 that serving God is more important than serving mammon. We welcome everyone to come and worship and fellowship every Saturday at the times listed on your screen and on our website, worldwidechurchofgod.com.